question. Jordy, let me steal it. So let's say Jordy's standing in an ideal, normal, natural stance, he a healthy adult human, average weight, there is, average weight, on average sculpture. Roughly, where's the center of mass, center of gravity? Right? It's the heart, the dense end. It's about two, two fingers below the, the navel, roughly. Vertical height, horizontal center as well, inside, 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 middle, 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 right? What can change that? Jordy's nine months pregnant, <laughs> belly, where does the center go? Visual, you got it. He's wearing mom jeans, finally. Where, if Jordy had a belly like that, if he was like a trucker and resting his big gulp on top, where would his center be? Still in the center here? Would it move back? Would it move forward towards the mass? Forward. Forward. Yeah, so if the belly was here, the center would move slightly forward, right? And then what happens with that weight is the body's going to compensate. It's going to lean forward. The center's going to lower. His base is going to usually widen a little bit to compensate. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So the center can move. It can shift. What happens if I take Jordy, center is in, 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 and I move him and I extend him like that? Where does the center start to go now? Does it go lower or does it go higher? It's going to go higher because the weight is here now, right? So imagine his total length now of his torso just changed from roughly a meter to about a meter and a half. So his center is going to rotate. It's going to come up as high as the plexus, right? So in the Russian martial arts, they refer to this as the solar plexus and the lunar plexus. And the two are in constant flux. Can't go much higher than that because that's the middle, Jordy. Can you, uh, Christy Yamaguchi, have your leg? Uh, everyone back to the door like that. Boom, yeah. Total length of your body, more mass on the upper, right? The center may go up to about the plexus, about the chest. That's about as high as it can go, right? That's it, because this part is usually heavier. If he was a much heavier person, huge belly, it would come forward and it would rise less. Sumo wrestler, it'll rise less because they have that much mass. And that's why they're so solid at the bottom. Does mass play a role in movement? If you try to move somebody, they have more mass. Of course. Is it harder to move them? Of course. Yeah. If Jordy was holding a Swiss ball, I'm about 30 pounds heavier than Jordy. If I run at him and run into the Swiss ball, is he more likely to move or am I more likely to bounce off? If I'm a bowling ball and he's a cue ball, who's moving? Right? I'm waiting for an answer. Okay. Smaller person going to move. What if Jordy was running at me really, really fast? Is he more likely to go through me or bounce off me? Yeah. When I was in India, I saw a guy in a moped ride through traffic in front of me perpendicular into the leg of an elephant. Guess who won? Elephant wasn't moving. Did the elephant move because the guy was going really, really fast and had his head down? He did not. Right? So weight wins, right? Mass wins. So if you've got somebody who's really, really big, really, really solid, they're hard to move. What will affect that mobility, even though he's big? Center of gravity, right? So I want to get that center of gravity usually outside of the base of sustenance. Does that make sense? Now, does the center of gravity always reside inside the body or can it be outside of the body? It should be outside. Yeah? Okay. So if I have a ring and I take it, and I do this, and I then support this to the ceiling and I leave go, what's gonna happen? It's always gonna do that, right? Because that's the vertical center of gravity on this. Does that make sense? Yep. If I take a second string and I suspend it here, where's the actual center of gravity between those two points of support? Somewhere between between the, uh, exactly in the middle, between the two supports. So when you wrestle with somebody, they're gonna have your center, he's gonna have his center, and your combined center is directly in the middle of both. If I only fight against his center, and that center gets taken away, his center wins. If he only fights against my center, I take his away, mine wins. But as soon as we co-mingle and attach, the center is actually between both of us. We become a, a four-legged creature. Does that make sense? What if I go here? Where's the center of gravity now? If I wanted to hang it like that. Yep. That's the center of gravity. Problem is, I don't have anything there. That's why wheels need spokes. Does that make sense? So that is a classic example of a center of gravity residing outside of a shape. Does that make sense? 1968, guys, if you look at this diagram on the wall, a guy named Dick Fosbury. Dick Fosbury was, uh, was a huge innovator. Everybody in the world was high jumping over bars like this. So that means if the bar was here and they got their center of gravity over it, they had to clear their legs. So when people would fail, they would clip their toes and fall forward, boom, fall down. And he said, hey, what if I arch back hugely big arch, circle, center of gravity moves towards the middle. Now I can just clear the bar with my butt, 
sweep over it, and I don't even have the leg strength to clear the bar with my center of gravity. The center of gravity doesn't even come close to the bar. So Jordy has a great meter and a half vertical leap, and I have a shallow, you know, whatever it is, 16 centimeter leap on a good day with a trampoline and a child pushing me. But if I have good arch and good conviction, I go over, I can clear a higher surface even though my center of gravity is below. Does that make sense? What took so long for people to do this? They didn't That's have funny. an understanding of the center of gravity, yes? No, nobody wanted to jump backwards head first over a fucking bar. Right? That's what it is, <laughs> it's fear, right? Everybody understood center of gravity and he said, what if I did it this way? And then, uh, mm, they knew center of gravity since Archimedes. They knew this since ancient Greece, right? So imagine saying, hey, I bet you I could go even higher if I went head first backwards. Let's try it, right? That's a, that's a motivating factor. So, keeping this in mind, if I go here and Jordy hunches up like that to defend himself, is that a good defense? Yes. Does every wrestler in the world use this? Yes. Is that a good defense? Yes. Fantastic. That's why every wrestler in the world uses it, yeah? So, it takes my center down, it spreads my base, gives me a better base of sustenance, and if I have to adjust, I'm very close to the ground. Does that make sense? Some guys will even fight like that. Crazy BJJ, they start off here, right? Center of gravity is in the earth now. <laughs> They're in bed. So, where's his center of gravity when he's here? Is it in his body? Somewhere right above there. Yeah. So if I attach to Jordy heavily, where does the center of gravity now go? Between the two. Yeah, somewhere between mine and his, right around here. And so the problem is now, if I grab Jordy and I try to get in and turn him around the center of gravity that I've been used to because all the work I've been doing is here, mm -hmm. and it's nice and safely snuggled under a blanket having a cocoa inside his belly, <laughs> and now I try to turn Jordy around his spine here, it gets hard because that's nowhere near his center of gravity. His center of gravity is out here. But if I start to think about that space, let's say I commit very quickly, so there's less attachment, less risk of joint center of mass, and I turn Jordy, and I think of going around the base of his spine versus turning him in a bigger circle around the space in front of him. It's a big difference on the other leg. When I turn somebody here around the hip, they can adjust because it's not directly towards the center of gravity. If I think of the center being here and I turn him in a bigger circle like a bus steering wheel, now the other foot moves more. Mm -hmm. right, so let's say Jordy grabs my head. If Jordy thinks of my tailbone, my hair, my former position, and he thinks of trying to bend me over this, I'm pretty strong. But if he thinks of it being somewhere here, and he thinks of pulling me in a larger arc over that, I lose balance. Most people grab on, they try to pull the guy over the knot. He's buoyant. But if I realize the center is not here, it's now forward, in fact, it's somewhere in the middle, and I think, man, if I was to pull him over that, he's gonna lose more balance. Does that make sense? So, for now we're not resisting, so it doesn't matter as much the joint center. But when I grip him, I want to see the difference between trying to turn him around purely three-dimensional planes of his body, as if he's in a vacuum, without any structural deviation. If I try to turn him around that hara, that sort of traditional Japanese mindset, it's okay. But the reality is, when he's concave like this and he's fighting, the center is no longer there. Traditional Japanese Chinese martial arts, they understood it to some extent, so then they believed there was energy residing there, the dantian and the hara. They did their best to externalize it. Right? The Russians believed there was a sun and a moon in the body, solar and lunar plexus, because it cultivated yar. Same thing as chi, pagan gods, they believed in two cycles, all that. So they took the structure they had, they tried to explain it. It was right to an extent, but for no reason that they believed it was right, right? It was physics, but they thought that was it. So very often, if you believe in one center residing here, then if a person changes the balance, you're thinking you just have to pack your chi down harder, keep your chi in your legs, connect to the planet, right? Oh, channel, you're gonna be stronger. But that's not true. The explanation was faulty. It was correct by coincidence, but they were doing it for the wrong reasons. And then it hits a point where it no longer works. It has nothing to do with energy from the planet. It doesn't matter how much you pack your chi down. It doesn't matter how much you, you erase your pagan vitality for the copper-bearded gods. It's not the reason. The reason is because the center is low and between a wide base. And when I move, it slips forward. So I need to have... The reason some of the Russian fighters have better stability is because they have more mobility in the solar and lunar plexus. Like they have more thoracic mobility, they start, so they, it, it creates yielding and they have better stability low. It has nothing to do with energy. But if I scientifically understand that the center is actually external, I start to rotate around that center, now I get bigger affectation. Mm -hmm. So feel the difference between grabbing him and pulling him just around that perceived poetic center of his body 
versus stepping back and feeling the space between and understanding where that combined center is. Try to visualize it a little bit. We go back and forth. Add some drills to it. 